How do you load a CSV file into the FireTech system with pyro ignition control? We'll go through that right now. In video 301, we walk through taking a simple CSV pyro script and loading it into the module with the FTech application. You can also load that same script with pyro ignition control software. We'll go through that here. But first, what we'll do is we'll open up the CSV file in a spreadsheet application. I happen to be using OpenOffice and walk through that script. So here's the script with the FireTech format. ID, Rails, Channel, Time, Sequence, Value, Duration, Custom 1, 2, and 3. This is the same script that we were looking at before. We have one module. We're using two rails, Rail 1 and Rail 2. We're using all 12 channels on the first rail and only six channels or queues on the second rail. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'll point out this is 301 FireTech PyroScript.csv. If we were to open that same script in a Word document or open it just in Notepad real quick, this is what we see. It is all the values are separated by commas. Now we are going to open pyro ignition control. In pyro ignition control you can go to file and CSV import to import a CSV file. However, that does not work well with the FireTech script, but I'm going to show you the steps in importing a CSV file in pyro ignition control first. Then we will go through the function to convert a FireTech script to a pyro ignition control project. So if we try to import this through the CSV tool here and we open the 301 FireTech pyro script CSV file, we get this importer tool here. The first thing you want to do is hit search fields. When you hit that, what it's doing is searching the fields of the CSV file for its headers. And those show up here. What you're doing then is you're mapping the columns of pyro ignition control to the columns of the CSV file. Slave is the module in pyro ignition control, so we would map that to ID from the CSV file. Ignition time would be our time in the FireTech CSV file. Output, well, what do we choose for output? Because the FireTech system has both rails and channels. And that's where we have an issue with the pyro ignition control system. Because it uses output here to capture both the rail and the channel. It is rail slash channel. So for rail 2, Q2, it would be 2 slash 2. And this import tool doesn't convert that. Also, the CSV import tool for pyro ignition control uses a combination of delays, break times, and ignition times. So if we were to try to import the list, we would get this warning here. So rather than using the CSV file, we are just going to cancel this. What we will do now for the FireTech system in this version of Pyro Ignition Control, it has a FireTech function. If we go to Ignition Systems or hit F7, from this menu here, you want to select Import FireTech File Format. What this will do is it will take the CSV file format for FireTech and convert it to a Pyro Ignition Control project format. 
So we will select our 301 FireTech PyroScript CSV file, hit open, and this window pops up, but now it's asking us what we want to save this as, as a Pyro Ignition Control Script. So we'll go ahead and save it as our 301 FireTech Pyro Script. I'm just going to remove this, the CSV file type there and hit save. And we get a window that pops up. Let me drag it over from the other screen. It says Pyro Control Script Saved. And you hit OK. And you can go ahead and close this. Now you will go to File and rather than CSV Import, we are now importing the project, the Pyro Ignition Control project file. And Pyro Ignition Control file types end in a .zpl. This is the file that we just saved. Now we will open this. It's going to ask us for the start time. We're going to go ahead and leave that as zero. And now it has loaded the FireTech script into Pyro Ignition Control. And you can see here what I was talking about. Output is 2 slash 1. This is module 1. And again, this script only has one module. Rail 2 Q1. And that's why you need to use that FireTech function. So once you're in Pyro Ignition Control, and this is not connected, so I'll go ahead and turn the module on. And once it powers up here, I will give it ID1. You can hear the chime as it connects. You'll then go to Setting and Connect. And down here you can see Connected to Ignition System. Now we'll go back to Ignition System Function, Windows, Ignition System Function, or hit F7. We'll get this menu here, the same menu we were looking at before with the FireTech features. And now we'll go to Module Test. This Test Run interface will show up, which will look very similar to the FireTech Show Designer interface. If we do a interface search, which it's already done, we've got a module here. We're going to then send project to interfaces. We will get this window here that will pop up. We'll select our interface, which is module one. We will now send show to selected, which we can see here, it successfully sent program to interface one. We can go ahead and close this. And on our module, which I'm not showing in this video, I've got the script loaded and it's showing PRG in the window. So now we could fire this script manually from a module just like what was shown in video 301.